Hey, what's happening guys? We're still working on the uh, anti-bark device and today we're taking a look at amplifier uh, ICs. First one we're going to look at is the LM386 and I'd just like to say this video is brought to you by Solder Stick and there will be more of that at the end. So the LM386, I'm sure that you are all familiar with it. It is a super simple little 8-pin dip if we take a look at the uh, data sheet here, the LM386 low voltage audio power amplifier, battery operation, which basically means single source. You don't need a dual supply, uh, positive and ground. 4 to 12 volts or 5 to 18 volts. Low quiescent current drain of 4 milliamp and voltage gains from 20 to 200. 20 is built in, you don't have to do anything. That's the circuit we're seeing here. Uh, ground referenced input, yes. Self-centering output quiescent voltage, yes. Low distortion, then you know, some of the things that's available. And if we take a look at the circuit itself, you can see basically it's just a bunch of transistors and a couple of diodes. Here is our pinout. We have uh, this fixed as an inverting amplifier, so is that an inverting amplifier? No, it's not an inverting amplifier. So pin two is is held to ground. Pin four goes to ground. Pin six goes to VCC. There's our out, which we're decoupling with an electrolytic cap, and our input comes on here. So here is the circuit we're using with gain 20. So I'm having some issues with this. <laughs> What's new, right? Um, for right now, I have eliminated this little frequency dependent part of the circuit here because it wasn't helping or hurting me at the moment. So here is the issue that I'm having. I'll take you down here. So you can get a look at the circuit. Here's our input. It's coming in from the uh, signal generator. Right now, I just have it on a 1.2 kilohertz. And then uh, the other side of that potentiometer goes to ground. Basically, it's a volume control. We're bleeding off some of the input to ground. What we're taking goes over here to pin 3. There is our decoupling cap. And basically, that's all there is to it. I'm going to take this speaker and put it face down because this is an annoying sound. So, bear with me. Okay, there it is. That is just really, really annoying. Let me try something else to make it maybe a little more quiet. Yeah, there's not much I can do. Okay. So, here's the problem. There's the signal. A lot of ringing on it, but I'm not worried about the ringing. What I am worried about is this. Here's the volume. Maximum. But as I come down and approach about half volume, we're getting some harmonics in there. And maybe we're at a 60-65% volume there. And we have no output to the speaker whatsoever. But if you look, you know, we're, we're putting out a square wave there at 944 millivolts. And if I take it back up where it's more of the audio range, There's a maximum value. There's where we start getting harmonics. And then as soon as we drop under a volt, we're losing it. So, 
Y. All right, let's go over to the original product project. Let me uh, shut off the power there. Shut off the power there. Disconnect, disconnect, and disconnect. And disconnect. So everything has now been disconnected. And we can bring in the original, which you can see I have a, a LM386 connected there. This goes here like so. And then we can connect up our power, always connecting our ground first. And we'll bring in our our probe so we can see what's going on. Connect our ground up there. And grab this little output right here. I'm going to take, take it right here. And we can power up. Now keep in mind that this is close to 20 kilohertz. And if I show you the signal... We're at 17. So there we are at 20 kilohertz. We've got an output of 6 volts. Other than the fact that I can't hear anything, and I think that's okay, I think we're on to something here. I think this is going to work out all right. Now, one thing to notice here is that I do have a second capacitor going between pins 1 and 8 here. Those are our gain pins. So we're maxing out the gain on this. But we are outputting a relatively square, square wave at 20 kilohertz. So I've got two speakers coming, one from B-Blood in Florida sending me one. And then I have a special ultrasonic speaker designed for uh, pest repelling. And they will both be here today. So in our next video, we will come back and we will take a look at what's going on there with those and see if we can't actually hear something. But in the meantime, I think I, whoops. <laughs> I think I have to go and see what my girly girl wants, right? Girly girl, girly girl dogs. Yes. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share. And don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. And big thanks to you guys for watching. And a big thanks to our sponsor, Solder Stick. So check out this little video right here at the end. Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. Solder Stick makes quick, waterproof wire connections that last a long time and protect whatever it is you're working on. They sell different types of connectors, everything from T-tap connectors, which allow you to put a splice into the middle of a wire without having to cut the wire or remove any insulation, waterproof uh, melt butt connector kits, Spade connector kits, which if you work on cars or boats, you know how useful they will be. And the same goes for ring connectors. When you need to connect a wire to something with a nut and a bolt, this is simply the way to do it. Solder stick. Remember them for all of your wire connection needs. There's a link down below for a discount.